Toyota has progressed in its new basic car development project with its goal of establishing a new world standard in compact cars. The first car created from this project is the hatchback Yaris, which has a great reputation in Europe since it came to market. To add to the hatchback, new versions the sedan and wagon have now been introduced to certain areas of the world. Also, aside from the 1SZ FE 1 liter engine, a new 1.3 liter 2NZ FE engine has been added. For the sedan, a 1.5 liter 1NZ FE engine is available. The Yaris, or Echo, with the choice of three body types and three engine sizes, will be widely introduced to the world market. As a new standard in compact cars, Toyota introduces the new basic car Yaris and Echo for the 21st century. It is the birth of a new series of compact cars fit to carry the title of a world-class car. What kind of engine performance is demanded of the next generation of compact cars? It must be a high performance engine that is easy to handle, practical for everyday driving. And fuel efficient with low exhaust emissions to reduce the environmental problems of today. The new 2NZ FE engine is a 1.3 liter inline four-cylinder DOHC engine. It emphasizes low and medium torque, giving it a powerful start and acceleration. The 1NZ FE engine on the sedan is a 1.5 liter inline four-cylinder DOHC engine. Its powerful and flat torque can manage low to high RPM. Compared to the previous engines of the same size, it has 15% more power at maximum output. How did the new engine get its improved performance? One big factor is the adoption of Variable Valve Timing Intelligent, or VVTI. The VVTI system enables proper combustion in accordance with driving conditions by finely tuning the timing of the intake valve. For example, when the engine is idling, the opening of the intake valve is retarded to prevent exhaust gas from intermixing with the intake air-fuel mixture. This stabilizes combustion, enabling a lowered idle speed and improving fuel economy. During ordinary driving, the valve timing is advanced in order to reburn a portion of the exhaust gas. As a result, the creation of harmful substances in the exhaust gases is minimized and the emission of exhaust gases is lowered. Furthermore, during full power operation, the valve timing is advanced to prevent the intake lag that is associated with high RPM. As a result, a greater amount of air-fuel mixture can be drawn in, thus improving output. 
Thus, with the adoption of VVTI, improved torque in low and medium speed ranges, improved output at high speed, fuel economy and low exhaust emissions can be realized. Another factor is the reduction of energy lost from the friction of engine parts. With the 2NZFE and the 1NZFE engines, this has been reduced to a minimum to improve performance. This reduction is due to the adoption of the offset crankshaft. In current engines, the center of the crankshaft is positioned to the center of the cylinder, as shown in this diagram. With the 2NZFE and the 1NZFE engines, the center of the crankshaft has been shifted 12 millimeters toward the rear of the car. Take a look at the model to see how offset positioning reduces friction. First, let's check the friction points without offset positioning, with the engine running. In three of the four strokes of the engine, the intake, the compression, and the exhaust strokes, the pistons move with the rotation of the crankshaft. When the pistons move, they press against the right side of the cylinder, causing friction only on the right. The pistons still move normally when the left side of the cylinder is removed as shown. Now let's look at the combustion stroke, where the most amount of force is received from the top. In the combustion stroke, friction occurs only on the left side of the cylinder. Moreover, the friction occurring here is much stronger than in the other areas by far. Therefore, it is important that this friction be reduced. The piston receives the most force when it is a little lower than the upper dead point. By looking closely at how the force is applied, the combustion pressure P can be divided into P1, which presses the connecting rod, and P2, which presses the cylinder. P2 is the cause of the friction. Let's see what happens when the offset crankshaft is adopted. The connecting rod is almost in parallel with the movement of the piston at the point where it receives the most combustion pressure. Friction to the cylinder has been eliminated. Also, with the offset positioning, when the piston moves lower, the P2 pressure to the cylinder is reduced as well. In this way, the most problematic friction occurring in the combustion stroke has been reduced, as well as friction problems in other areas. As a result, engine friction has been reduced by 25%. Furthermore, by adopting the offset crankshaft, the time of the piston in the combustion stroke is lengthened, improving combustion efficiency. Here is why. In current model engines, the crankshaft rotates 180 degrees to move the piston from the upper dead point to the lower dead point, and rotates another 180 degrees to return the piston to the upper dead point. As the crankshaft rotates at the same speed, the time it takes for the piston to move from the upper to lower dead point and back to the upper dead point is the same. However, when the offset crankshaft is employed, the crankshaft must rotate more than 180 degrees in order to move the piston from the upper dead point to the lower.
This means it takes more time for the piston to move from the upper dead point to the lower than it takes to move back to the upper dead point. Therefore, the combustion stroke and the intake stroke where the piston moves down are lengthened. In the combustion stroke, the piston is pushed for a longer time, making more use of the increased energy from the combustion. As a result, combustion efficiency is improved. In conclusion, the offset crankshaft has produced two results, friction reduction and combustion efficiency improvement. Another unique characteristic of the 2NZFE and 1NZFE engines is the forward intake and the rear exhaust layout. By implementing the forward intake layout, the intake manifold receives wind directly from the front, making it less likely for the intake air to warm. This improves intake efficiency, increasing output. Also, with the rear exhaust layout, the length of the exhaust pipe to the catalytic converter can be shortened. The catalytic converter changes the carbon monoxide, hydrocarbon and nitrogen oxide in the exhaust gas to benign substances. The higher the exhaust gas temperature, the better the catalytic converter functions. By shortening the length of the exhaust pipe leading to the catalytic converter, the converter can be warmed up faster when the engine is turned on and remains warm even at low speeds, thus contributing to cleaner exhaust gas. The 2NZFE and the 1NZFE engines, with the adoptions of many new mechanisms, reach the top level of their class in high performance, fuel economy and low exhaust emissions. They are truly engines suitable for the next generation of compact cars. The Yaris Echo automatic transaxles bring out the most of their high performance engines. Linear acceleration and high level response are their special characteristics. The Yaris Echo are the first in their class to be equipped with an electronically controlled four-speed automatic transaxle called the Super ECT. The Super ECT has a new hydraulic control system and an advanced engine transaxle total control system which controls the clutch pressure during shift changes to match driving conditions. This reduces shock due to gear changes during acceleration, resulting in a linear acceleration. Also, the on-off control of the lock-up clutch and an automatic control of gear changes to adapt to driving conditions improve transmission and fuel efficiency. Furthermore, with the new system, shift time lag due to the automatic transaxle has been cut in half. For example, when the driver wants to use the engine brake, the driver would shift down from fourth gear to third gear or to second gear. The driver will notice a big difference in the quickness and smoothness of the shift chain. This new automatic transaxle enables a smooth and quick gear change that goes beyond the previous automatic transaxle. ABS enables stable braking, even on slippery surfaces. It is a system that regulates braking by detecting if a wheel is about to become locked. This system has been further developed into one that properly regulates the brake force distribution before the wheels become locked, thus making it possible to provide excellent braking performance. 
Adopted on the Yaris Echo wagons, it's ABS with EBD, which stands for Electronic Brake Force Distribution. In ABS with EBD, the brake force distribution that was performed mechanically in the past is now controlled electrically. As a result, proper brake force distribution in accordance with the vehicle's driving conditions has been achieved. In addition to the front rear wheel brake force distribution, this system also affects right left wheel control. Let's see how this system operates. If the brakes are applied when the vehicle is being driven in a straight line, the shifting of the load causes the load applied to the rear wheels to decrease. During cornering, the load applied to the inner wheels is also decreased. In this case, if the same amount of braking force is applied to all four wheels, the wheels with the decreased load become susceptible to locking. ABS with EBD detects these conditions through the wheel speed sensors and uses the brake actuators to properly control the brake force distribution to the four wheels to enhance braking performance. If the wheels are about to become locked thereafter, the conventional ABS function is activated. ABS with EBD detects the conditions of the wheels in this manner in order to properly distribute the braking force. Therefore, even if there are changes in the loading conditions or the extent of braking, proper braking force is maintained at the four wheels, thus providing excellent braking performance. How often the driver thinks, what a waste of gas, when waiting at a traffic light or stuck in a traffic jam. However, to stop and restart the engine each time just to save gas would be a hassle. A new system has been developed that automatically stops and restarts the engine when the car comes to a stop. There is no need to fiddle with the ignition switch. This is the Toyota Stop and Go system. It has been installed on the one liter manual transaxle hatchback for Europe. This is how the system operates. Several built-in computers check preset items of conditions. If all the items are met, a standby indicator light goes on to signal that the system is functioning. The car stops. The driver puts the gear in neutral. And when the clutch pedal is released, the engine automatically stops, turning on the execute indicator light. When the driver depresses the clutch pedal once again, the engine automatically restarts. With the Toyota stop and go system, the use of the battery and starter with this constant turning off and on of the engine may be a worry. But there is no need to worry. A large capacity battery is installed as well as a battery current sensor that constantly surveys the amount of electric discharge. Also, a starter able to endure the numerous turning on and off of the engine is used. It is equipped with a safety device that will automatically turn the engine on in case the brake booster reserve vacuum becomes inadequate or if, for example, the car starts to move down a hill. If the driver wishes not to use the Toyota stop and go system, the ECO can be switched off. When the ECO is off, the driver must turn the ignition switch manually to turn the engine on and off. The Toyota stop and go system, which enables the driver to save gas during a temporary stop without any manual operation, 
is one answer to the environmental and energy problems we face today. The spacious interior that makes you forget that it's a compact car is one of the big sales points of the Yaris Echo. The wagon type has the world's first retractable rear seat, making it the most spacious flat floor car in its class. Let's take a closer look at the retractable seats. Up until now, wagon type cars generally offered fully reclining seats or seat backs to create more rear deck space. However, the reclined seat would often just be in the way instead of actually creating enough space. If the rear seats were made removable, although it would create space, it would be a hassle to remove them. Not to mention the problem of finding the space to store the removed seats. Then Toyota came up with the idea of making the rear seats retractable and stored underneath the floor. As shown here, the rear seat can be easily stowed underneath the floor without detaching the headrest. By simply installing the floorboard over it, a roomy and flat deck space is created. Furthermore, the center seat can be removed, creating a walk-through space, allowing both getting into and out of the car from the rear door. An anchor that allows ISO standard child seats to be easily secured is provided on both the right and left rear seat. The child seat can be secured to the anchor with the lock device on the child seat. Because it is a compact car, the given space must be utilized wisely. This thinking brought about the retractable seats, making practical and spacious interior a reality. The VVTI mechanism of the two NZFE and the one NZFE engines, like the one SZFE engines, basically operates with the same principle as the VVTI of other models. The difference is that a vane type mechanism has been adopted for changing the camshaft angle. The VVTI controller contains a vane portion that is secured to the intake camshaft which rotates the inside of the housing that is secured to the drive gear. On the advanced side, the vane is pressed by the hydraulic pressure and rotates inside the housing in this manner to change the angle of the camshaft. On the retard side, the vane rotates in this manner. To understand the operation of ABS with EBD, let's see an example of how this system functions when the driver applies the brakes while the vehicle is being driven in a straight line. When the brakes are applied, the wheels begin to decelerate. A wheel speed sensor is provided at each wheel to detect the slippage of the wheel. If the system detects that the rear wheels are susceptible to locking first, 
It affects front rear wheel electronic brake force distribution control, or EBD. Under EBD control, the brake actuator's pressure holding valve for the rear is turned on. This stops the increase in the pressure to the rear wheel brakes and holds the brake pressure. From this state, if the driver depresses the brake pedal even further, the brake pressure increases only in the front wheel brakes. As a result, the slipping conditions of the rear wheels recover relatively and the pressure holding valve for the rear is turned off to resume the increase in brake pressure to the rear wheels. As the driver continues to apply the brakes, this operation is repeated in order to properly distribute the brake pressure between the front and rear wheels. If the driver depresses the brake pedal even further and the wheels are about to become locked, the conventional ABS control takes over. The EBD utilizes a part of the ABS functions in this manner. Therefore, if the EBD malfunctions, the ABS also invariably malfunctions. In this case, the ABS warning light and the brake warning light illuminate simultaneously to alert the driver. However, if the ABS malfunctions, it is not necessarily accompanied by the malfunction of the EBD. In this case, only the ABS warning light illuminates. The Toyota Stop and Go System ECU, established for the hatchback for European specification, functions when and only when all the set conditions have been met. For further information on the preset conditions, refer to the Toyota Service Bulletin. In the bulletin, there is a section stating the requirement of obtaining a driving speed of more than one to two kilometers per hour. The Toyota Stop and Go system will allow the engine to stop only once at one time or for one trip. After the engine has automatically stopped and restarted, the car must reach a speed of at least one to two kilometers per hour in order for the system to function again. Also, when the hood is opened and the engine is started for a checkup, for instance, the system will not function. When the car battery has been removed, the clutch stroke sensor value must be reset. This is done by depressing the clutch pedal until the low switch turns on, and then returning the clutch until the upper switch turns on. This must be repeated at least 10 times. If the driver's side door or the engine hood is opened while the system is in operation, a warning buzzer will sound and the indicator lights will flash in the same manner as they do when the engine stalls. In this case, the engine will not start by depressing the clutch pedal. The engine must be started with the ignition key. If the clutch is not depressed thoroughly, when the system is on, a warning buzzer will sound. In this case, the driver must first shift to neutral and then depress the clutch pedal completely to automatically start the engine. Before loosening the drive shaft nut, the cinching of the nut must be undone. To undo the cinching of the nut, use the dedicated SST. Note that the removed nut cannot be reused. The SST number is 09930-00010. When using a garage jack, understand that the rear jack up points are the same with all car types and are shown here. Never jack up at the rear axle beam, which includes the trailing arm and the spring seat. 
When jacking up, always use the attachment. The front jack up points, also the same with all car types, are shown here. The retractable seat, available on the wagon type car, is equipped with a support to soften the shock when it is stowed away or taken out. When installing the support in the rear seat assembly, first bolt down the front section of the seat. The bolt on the rear section of the seat should be loosened about two turns, enough to temporarily keep it in place. After securing the seat assembly in the car, lock the back section of the seat to the floor, and then finish tightening the bolts. 